This video is to demonstrate how to generate a patient statement when sending a statement either to collect a balance or to explain a refund to a patient. For this demonstration video, I will be completing this in the EHR exercises for SimChart for the medical office. Because a patient statement is a form that has to be completed that is a replica of the patient's ledger, then we will go to the form repository. You'll notice on the left hand side of the screen under the information panel, you will see you have patient forms and office forms. This is a form that is going to be sent to the patient, therefore you need to click patient statement. This will open out a grade patient statement. You will need to perform a patient search to open the patient's statement and demographics. I will be performing this demonstration on my test patient. Click the radio dial in front of the appropriate patient name and hit select. This will default and enter the already provided information in the patient's demographic for their mailing address, account number, name, and insurance information. In your exercises, you have various um, activities that you may send a statement for, whether it is a true patient's outstanding balance that we need to generate a statement for, or it could be we are sending a statement um, with a refund check and so our entries much like our patient's ledger must have a single line of entry explaining and walking us through or the patient through the step-by-step -step process as to how we obtained the refund amount um, or the collections amount. So just like in our patient's ledger, every line of service, every transaction, every payment, every adjustment must have a single and individual line of entry. Our statements are a replica of the patient's ledger, therefore they must also have a line-by-line -line entry of the transactions that have taken place that are either generating a balance due or they are generating a refund amount. So as we begin, you will have to enter the date of service. If this is a refund, then in a refund for a copayment, coinsurance, or deductible that the patient has paid for a specific date of service, you will begin by entering the date of that service that the charge was initially um, received and the payment was received for. So if the patient was seen yesterday and they had lab work, and the date of service that was entered in the ledger for that particular lab work that the patient paid for. Um, we would enter that date of service here. Make sure you give me an eight digit format. If the patient was seen for an office visit and this is what they were paying their copay for um, or if they paid for a lab work because they were not sure if it insurance would cover it at this point then I would and that's what I'm referring to then I would enter my description of that particular service so we'll um, do a lab work So this is the name of the uh, lab that was performed, the amount of that charge, the same as we would do in our ledger. So if the amount charged was $35, make sure you enter your dollar sign um, as well as the dollars and cents, make sure you're using currency format. The patient's responsibility uh, this is where if you are refunding this money, then you would enter zero dollars, 
was the patient's responsibility. If you a portion of this was indeed the patient's responsibility, then you would enter that amount here. Um, so we're saying that yesterday the patient was in the office, they um, had labs drawn, they paid for them out of pocket. The insurance has now come back and said, nope, we're paying for the whole thing or that is a covered service, so therefore we're bound by our contracts and allowables, so the patient's responsibility is zero, and this statement is actually to explain a refund. So now today I'm issuing this refund, so I would enter today's date. Make sure you have all your digits in there. And then I'm gonna enter a description um, and actually, correction, I need to, the patient's payment is not showing on here. So if they indeed made that payment, if you know if it was done in a cash payment, then you would give me that detailed information. If it was not a copayment, say they made, they paid the whole amount. then you could give me that description so we know that the patient's payment was cash. If it was a check, you would give me the check number. Um, how much did that patient pay? You're going to enter that amount here. If the patient paid the full amount, then we can obviously tell that from the service, the patient payment. Now the patient's responsibility would still be zero because we know already ahead of time now that uh, because we received that insurance payment that the patient's responsibility was indeed zero so we want to keep that consistent if the insurance come back and said that they actually did owe a copay for that then that's where you would change that to make it whatever that copay amount was all right so we're saying this insurance come back paid the whole amount so at this point i still need to show and explain why this is no longer the patient's responsibility and that was through an insurance payment that I received uh, today. Notice the date of service changes because as of today is when I received that insurance payment. If you know the name of your insurance company then you can go ahead and just enter that instead of insurance. So if it was the Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, payment and the check number, if you're given this information, then you could go ahead and enter that. If not, then you could leave it as a blank insurance payment, but we still need to know that it had to do with the insurance coming back and paying it or writing it off um, and represent that remittance advice that we receive. So if the insurance payment, um, insurance company allowed a portion of the 35, then that's what we're going to enter here. Patient's responsibility, if they said it was a copay, then you would put co the copay amount here. If the patient was responsible for any of this charges fees. In this particular case, it is not. Now, 25 and 35, 25 from 35 does not equal a full refund. And if that was a insurance payment received and they did allow it, we have to look for any adjusted amounts because there is a difference here. And so we would need to either have a patient responsibility. We're looking to see is that remaining portion of that charge for that service, a patient's responsibility that needs to be paid, or does it indeed need to be written off? In our case, we're going to go ahead and say it is an insurance adjustment. So this is where because of the Blue Cross Blue Shield payment that was received on check number whatever you put in previously, we would continue 
and give a full description. So now we know that on this particular check, number 1245 from Blue Cross, uh, payment was received as well as a write-off for the remaining balance. The patient was not due or responsible for any of the amount due. Therefore, the insurance has paid and written off the full amount for the blood work. The patient paid it and the refund. So we're going to have to do one more showing that we are refunding this back. And this is where we would go ahead and document our check information. Whatever your check number is. The amount that they were refunded. And we would continue with the patient's responsibility all the way across. So how much is due from the patient? You're going to enter the dollar amount the patient is due. So if there's anything entered in this column, it should be reflected here on this patient statement. This is where you will have to make sure that you are aware of what that patient's ledger says before you get into this form because SimChart will not let you toggle back and forth without saving this information. Please pay them out in full. There's nothing to that's due. So in this case, this is we do not have a date to enter here in this particular box would be left blank. Once we are done, we're going to click save to save to the patient's record. They're going to ask you to confirm that this is indeed the date that you want to be reflected in the patient's chart. You click OK. And it states that this statement has been saved to the patient's record. In order to print out your hard copy and save your PDF file to upload to your Blackboard, as your instructions um, may say, you would go to the patient's medical record. You're going to open up that patient's electronic chart. You should scroll down under forms and you will see we have a patient statement entered and you would click on the appropriate statement and this is the form that you would need to print out and save as a PDF. Notice it shows the charge that was originally entered that the patient paid for the insurance payment and any write-offs amount, the patient refund that we are issuing to the patient stating that it is all amount due, zero. This concludes how to generate a patient statement reflecting either a patient refund or a patient's balance due.